In this video, I wanted to work through an example of calculating an expectation value. So let's look at the problem. So it says calculate the average distance of an electron from the nucleus in the hydrogen atom in its lowest energy state. And so here what I'm giving you is the wave function for the lowest energy state in the hydrogen atom, right? So what I want to do is calculate the average position. So I have this wave function that defines a system and the operator that defines position or yeah, distance or position is the position operator. So we want to consider the position operator. And the position operator is super easy. So whatever your coordinate system is, uh, in this case, our uh, coordinate system is going to be a spherical polar coordinates. Uh, we know that distance is defined by R, right? So we're going to have a position operator R, which is simply to multiply by R, right? That's, that's it. You don't have to take a derivative. You don't have to integrate. You just simply have to multiply whatever that system is, whatever its wave function is by the the whatever denotes position or distance in your coordinates and in this case that's r so we just want to multiply by r to consider the position operator so now what i want to do is calculate an expectation value based on this operator right because calculating an expectation value of the position operator gives us the average position right the average distance of this electron from the nucleus it answers our question so let's do it. So we want to calculate the expectation value. So calculate our expectation value. So we will use that notation. So put our position operator in the brackets and we want to evaluate the integral of psi star r times psi d tau, right? So I want to integrate this thing over all space. Now, the cool thing about this position operator, since it doesn't uh, have any derivatives or anything, you know, it really doesn't matter where it sits in this integral because you're really just multiplying by r. So I can really re-express this as r times the square modulus of the wave function, right? See what I did there, right? Because this psi star times psi is just the square modulus. This R can just be anywhere in the integrand since the only thing we're doing is just multiplying by that variable, right? Okay, so what we need to do now, since we know that this is just gonna be the square modulus, we just have to um, square this wave function, multiply by R and integrate over all space, right? So let's do it. So the square modulus of the wave function So we'll have a psi squared, which will be equal to one over pi a naught to the third times e to the negative two r over a naught, right? So that's gonna be the square modulus of our wave function, right? All I do is just take this wave function, uh, take the square modulus, which in this case, since it's not a complex number, you really don't need to do anything. So you're just really multiplying these two together. Right, so that gives us the square modulus of the wave function. So now I wanna use this, plug it back into the integrand and then solve, right? So uh, just plug this back into the, uh, to the integrand. So plug in, right? And using our uh, differential volume element, right? So I'm, I'm plugging this in and I'm considering that our differential volume element, d tau, since we're in spherical polar coordinates, that uh, differential volume element is going to be r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi, right? We have to integrate over all space. Even though this doesn't have an angular component, it still is required that we integrate over all available space, r, theta, and phi, right? So, uh, so now I'm going to plug this in and plug in our differential volume element. So now our integral for the expectation value of this operator is going to be a triple integral where this guy, this constant is gonna be able to come out, right? So one over pi a naught to the third can come out and we have a triple integral over all space. So we've got 
Uh, the phi is from zero to two pi. We got theta from zero to pi. And then we got r from zero to infinity, right? Now, since there's already an r here, you multiply r, that r times r squared. That's going to give us r to the third, right? r to the third e to the negative 2r over a naught sine theta dr d theta d phi, right? Now, like I said before, these triple integrals should be fairly unintimidating. All you have to do is just distribute everything that's a part of a specific uh, interval and just evaluate those single integrals and then just smash them all back together, right? So we'll have one over uh, pi a naught to the third. Uh, first, let's do everything that depends on r, right? So uh, everything that depends on r, we'll have r to the third and our exponential, right? So we'll have from zero to infinity of r to the third e to the negative two r over a naught, right? That's going to be dr. And then the next integral, everything that depends on theta, going to be going from zero to pi of sine theta, d theta. And last, the uh, everything that depends on the azimuthal angle, phi. So zero to two pi, d phi. Okay, so now we got these three integrals that we need to evaluate. So this is the uh, integral that I've pointed out before. It should be in your textbook, right? This uh, product of Gaussian integrals. So um, using that evaluation, right, we'll end up with the solution here of three a naught to the fourth over eight times when you evaluate um, the integral of sine theta and evaluate from zero to pi, you'll get two as a result there and then two pi here, right? So, uh, so when you put all of this stuff together, right, you uh, multiply out everything together, you end up with three a naught over two, right, as the average distance away from the nucleus, right? So this is just some fraction of our constant a naught. Now, a naught actually has a numerical value. So a naught is the Bohr radius. and A naught is going to be equal to 52.9 picometers. So we can also express this as a number as 79.4 picometers. When you plug in this uh, value for the Bohr radius, right? Okay, so this means that our electron will be located at an average distance from the nucleus of 79.4 picometers in the hydrogen atom in its lowest state, right? Now, keep in mind, we have to be very careful when we talk about this, right? Because what we're saying here, we're not saying that the electron will always be located at exactly 79.4 picometers. Quantum mechanics doesn't allow us to speak like that. What we have to say when we uh, evaluate these expectation values is that if we were to take a large number of measurements, the average value from that large number of measurements would be 79.4 picometers, right? So that you have to be very careful with how you talk about these things. Okay, so that gives us an example of expectation values. In the previous one, we went through just kind of in general what they are and how you calculate them. And in this video, we went through a more specific example of expectation values.